Got a call this morning from uh, Dr. Diva Frankel over at Advanced Foot Care in Aventura. She had a special request for us. Uh, she had asked us to put together some videos for a patient who had suffered a Liz Franks injury. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to work with doctors like uh, Diva Frankel and her patients to help them through this time where they may not be able to come in for therapy. So the foot itself, it's got 26 bones. It has 33 joints. 20 of those joints are articulating type joints. There's hundreds of ligaments and tendons and muscles that kind of bind it all together in this complex give and take of mobility and stability. And uh, an injury that Liz Frank's joint is where the tarsals and the metatarsals join up and where your foot goes through this toe off or extension process. So any type of inflammation or injury to that joint will create a lot of discomfort and a lot of compensation from other parts of the foot and ankle all the way up the chain into the low back. So we're gonna go through some exercises today to first start working out some ankle ranges of motion, some good stability work, open up the mobility of the Liz Franks as well as some of those other 20 articulating joints in the foot and the ankle. And again, we appreciate Dr. Diva Frankel and what she does for her patients and sending them our way and putting these videos together to kind of help the community at large. At first, what we want to try to do with the foot is to gain some range of motion throughout all of the parts and moving aspects of the foot, including all the individual little bones and joints that take place in there. So take a little tennis ball, place it on the floor and start rolling. Now that roll can be done in sitting to start because we want to limit the amount of pressure going through the foot. But instead of just rolling back and forth real quick, let's find a spot that might feel a little stuck and let's put a little pressure through it and allow the bones of the foot to meld and mold all the way around that part of the, of the ball. And then find another spot, there's a good one for me. And I'm gonna hold that right there and really go nice and slow to roll myself over that ball all the way through. Another thing we can use is a pivot point. It's a soft rubber movement, but it finds a simple point of restriction. You press down, you hold, and the goal is to allow that foot to mold over the pivot point, gaining some space in that Liz Franks or other joint structures that might be limited right now for us. So this is a good place to start. So one of the first exercises we can do to increase range of motion into dorsiflexion of the ankle is just bringing the foot onto a solid surface and slightly rocking back and forth. This rock back and forth rocking motion will create some opening in that dorsiflexion. By putting a little bit of extra weight into your, to your knee, you can do what's called scouring the ankle joint, moving it back and forth, opening up that ankle. What it looks like from the side, and I'll turn sideways for you to see it, is we slightly come over the toes with our knees, we rock back and forth, scouring the ankle, making sure that we have appropriate movement of that subtalar joint, the talar cruel joint, to make sure that we have good motion traveling through into dorsiflexion of the ankle. So another way to do this dorsiflexion movement is with a band. Placing that band all the way down as long to the ankle as you can, the band will pull the shin bone or the tibia backwards. And as you rock that knee coming forward into more dorsiflexion, the shin bone will be pulled backwards. It'll create some gapping in that ankle space. It's another great way to increase dorsiflexion of that ankle. Now, once we gain some range of motion through the ankle, we need to start working some specific range into the foot, into those 33 joints, right? We wanna make sure that we know what's happening in there. We need to make sure that the Liz Franks has a little bit of space to it. So what I've got here is an AirX pad, something that's got a little bit of give to it, and I've got it sitting on a mat. And that gives us just a little bit of pliability in the initial stages of returning back to range of motion and function after an injury. So I'm gonna step up out of this, but watch what's gonna happen is we're gonna go through that same extension motion and we're gonna try to get some midfoot extension as we lift our toes coming into that midfoot range of motion. And the idea here is to try to promote some extension that's gonna happen in that midfoot as we gain range and weight bearing status. So now that we've got the foot warmed up, we've got some range of motion going on in the ankle and we're moving to more of a weight bearing stance, stability type exercise. I've got two cones set up here and they're only for markers. And what we're gonna do is stand on the injured leg 
and we're gonna lift the opposite. Now with the opposite arm, we're gonna bend forward, touch the cone, come back up. The goal is to keep the pelvis level. We don't wanna see any rotation in that pelvis, not in this particular exercise. We'll do that with other things. But right now, again, we're gonna stand on one leg with the opposite arm reaching down, keeping the pelvis level, touching that cone, coming back up. Now, as we know that Liz Frank's joint's responsible for that toe off part right here, it needs a lot of flexibility and mobility through the joint structure as we go into toe off um, with, uh, with, with walking, with running, with jogging, those types of, uh, of activities. So I've got a Reebok step here, and what I'm gonna do is just bring my feet onto the step and I'm gonna alternate right and left, gaining a nice lengthening structure from my feet. And notice how I'm a little less weight bearing right now on my right foot as I come up into extension, and then I'm gaining some good weight bearing stability as I drop down into some calf and gastro stretching. Progressing on to something a little bit more dynamic, what we can do here is place some tape in a nice uh, star fashion or circle fashion and standing right in the middle with one foot, we're gonna try touch each piece of tape coming back to the middle. Now it gets a little tricky when you get to the other side like that. Now you can do this on both legs because we want to be able to give the injured leg a little bit of a chance to rest. And at the same time, we want to gain stability equally on both sides. Give it a shot. Dr. Steve Deshavi came to our office this past summer and taught us about the stability program, stability with a Y, um, in stabilization in the Z axis rotation. He talked about how um, all of the systems in our body, our fascial slings, all work in a rotational fashion. So as we start building some strength and some confidence and some movement through our foot and our ankle, we're gonna create a top-down approach into that stability. So using a system that he's designed here, a band with a wraparound system, we're gonna weight bear on the affected side. As we lunge back, we're gonna come up into a rotation with full extension. So in other words, we're getting good movement opening in the front of the left hip as we're having reciprocal motion on the opposite shoulder. Now I'm standing on a mat, which is a little bit cushy, so it's giving my foot and my ankle a little bit more work to do in this process. Now I can make this harder or easier by not touching the ground on the way back, holding the top position a little bit longer, Make it easier by sliding that back leg, keeping it on the ground at the same time. 